Oh. <sighs> What's up, everyone? Punchy back with Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter Four. Himatsu Bushi. Uh, uh, Himatsu Bushi. Um, man, first, my first for my first video, I practiced it, but then just completely lost it. Anyway, last time, speaking of which, we saw that we're currently from the viewpoint of an old, uh, let's say, colleague of Oishi-san. Back in the day, during the Hinozawa Dam project, we are actually going to Hinomizawa as um, that associate of Oishi, and about to take a bullet train there. Well, not there. But the next day, I took the bullet train to Nagoya, and from there, transferred to the train to the prefecture. I believe this is where we meet, where we're going to meet Oishi, because I think it mentioned that we, he was supposed to talk to the police force in Okinomiya or something like that, and it's where Oishi was originally, uh, originally started, I guess. Getting to my destination by land took several hours. If I was traveling by air, in that amount of time, I could probably get as far as Hong Kong. The prefecture was by no means close. I never sat in first class except for work, but when I did, the seats seemed stiff. Closing my eyes, I mentally reviewed the documents I read yesterday. The group under investigation, the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance, which I assume is the one that was created to fight the Hidamazawa Dam project. They were a group of residents, like I said, opposed to the development proposed under the Hinomazawa Dam project. The local protests were quite heated and were getting more radicalized, even limited to what was written in the newspapers. There was bloodshed that occurred during a clash with riot police, interference with dam construction, too many to count. The number of petitions, sit-ins, and direct appeals to the relevant organizations were innumerable. As an extension of that, there was a direct appeal to the Minister of Construction the other day. This was the reason why we were investigating this group in the first place. Ah, that was the uh, mysterious call with the Anon type uh, voice change I had. The land that lived on uh, the, the land that they lived on was going to be submerged, so it was no wonder they would go into a frenzy over it. Even given that though, could they really be really be capable of doing something like kidnapping the Minister of Construction's grandson in order to halt the project? From my take on it, I had serious doubts. This kidnapping plot was extremely sophisticated and complicated enough that it was believed that there was some political backing. This wasn't something that could be pulled off by some group of local protesters. Oh, they're not just any group of local protesters. They've got a curse behind them. Well, just like the chief said, the plan was to eliminate all possibilities. While I'm in the um, police's reference room, taking my time investigating, the higher ups in Tokyo would probably solve the case without my involvement entirely. Even if that was true, I couldn't regret being away from Tokyo while my wife was ready to give birth. This was work. There was really nothing I could do. Ding dong. The announcement that we would be arriving at our destination soon snapped me back to wakefulness. Gogura, the prefecture, prefectural public safety division. The Onigafuchi Defense Alliance, yeah, they've been quite active around here. The Prefectural Public Safety Department already had the documents and a cup of tea ready and waiting for me. The short of it is, they're a group of residents opposed to the dam. Really, it's probably better to say that every resident living on the land that's going to be submerged is rising to action, though. Like the old saying, fight to the last, they're determined and well prepared and well prepared a lot. Oh, they a they're a determined. 
It'd be nice if they drew the line at just being a moderate residential organization. The stack of papers they had prepared for me in the document room was no, by no means thin. At first, they were pretty much your average citizen, c uh, citizen's initiative, but ever since that incident with the ride police, they've really started to heat up. Now they've gotten a violent mentality on top of growing increasingly radical. I kind of remember the things that uh, Mian told us. I think I should put sugar cubes in the uh, equipment, right? Violent organizations usually indicate ones that enforce their own I ideology without regards to the democratic process. Breaking that down, many of those organizations held extreme left revolutionary ideo ideologies. Considering that, I couldn't help but be surprised that a citizen's group would end up going this far. Radical citizens' movements happen occasionally. It seemed, however, that this group was noth nothing as trifling as that. It seemed that I would have to reconsider exactly what this Onigafuchi Defense Alliance was. The Defense Alliance's demands demand, in other words, the withdrawal of the dam project. How far would they go to have that demand met? The kidnapping of the minister's grandson was classified. That meant, of course, I couldn't tell the prefectural department about it either. As you know, there were arrests after last week's confrontation with Minister Inugai. There's enough reason to believe they could use illegal means to assert their demands. I skimmed over the list of the criminal records related to the Onogafuchi Defense Alliance recorded in the documents. The contents were all violent, not giving me the barest hint of a feeling that these people were trying to uphold the law. Could you give me a basic rundown of the type of types of illegal activities the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance are engaging in? The chief opened up a manila envelope, fished out several unorganized sheets, and spread them out on the desks. It seems that raids on the construction site are the most common. At first, they were committing relatively petty crimes like cutting power cords, jamming locks, and breaking office windows by throwing rocks. Of course, what really happened first were things like demonstrations, sit-ins, and distribution of pamphlets, lively but democratic forms of protests. However, then the demonstrators and police clash, which started a riot, leading to numerous injuries and arrests. It was from then on that the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance, like the name implies, began to take a more demonic form of resistance. What a, what a time to use that word. <laughs> if the raids were frequent, didn't the local police up their patrols? Well, of course they were on full alert, but they were up against locals, you know? There wasn't much the police could do if they were sneaking around under the cover of darkness. You might as well label the entire map of Hinamazawa village around the dam construction site enemy territory. No matter how alert the police were, the locals would just show them exactly how easy it was to sneak around. Actually, it was after the police up security that, they, that the protesters started getting ever more extreme as though they were being provoked. See here? Can you tell how things started to heat up? An office set on fire. The destruction of heavy construction equipment. Destruction? They couldn't have used explosives? No way. You see, they crammed the gas tanks full of sugar cubes. Ah. If they do that, it fouls the engines. Even in Japan, it seemed there had been people doing that to the vehicles of occupying forces right after the war. Compared to misdemeanors like breaking windows, it was extremely violent and aggressive. After being toyed around with that to that, uh, what the, after being toyed around with to that extent, the local police had completely lost face. The arson was a bit much. After that, the local police drastically increased the number of personnel they had stationed there around the clock. The raids on the construction site quieted down a bit after that. He used the words quieted down, but there was 
that was still smack dab in the middle of the list of crimes. See, after that they... After they found that attacking the site had become difficult, they started resorting to personal attacks. The first people targeted were the construction workers. After that, there was silence. What was being described to me was a guerrilla war fought in the jungle. Threats and violence against the workers. Harsh words and harsher rocks were thrown. There is quite a list of accusations here, but there's not a whole lot of convictions. Of course not. First of all, there's no witnesses. On top of that, even if we identify the perpetrators, they have alibis coming out of the woodwork. What do you mean by that? Hmm. Take for example, you're walking around Hinamazawa when a certain man stabs you with a knife. You remember the person clearly and even know his name and address. However, the knife doesn't have any fingerprints on it and there's no other physical evidence. Well, you'd think this would be a run-of-the-mill case of assault, wouldn't you? In Hinamazawa though, it's a perfect crime. Yeah, we got the taste of that uh -huh. in the first chapter. Everybody is the entire village. They're all in on it. To protect the man who is the perpetrator, they'll get their story straight and prepare an alibi. To that end, they'll probably even forge some evidence. There's nothing they can do but put them on trial. On top of there not being any material evidence, though, people testify one after another to cover his side of the story. Any prosecutor would hesitate to file charges. I'm not sure about murder, but if it's something like opening a gash in somebody's forehead with a thrown rock, or leaving a bruise after hitting someone, even if you could single out the suspect, there's enough reasonable doubt to not convict. Every case is without a doubt perpetrated by someone in Hinuazawa, but they can't identify who. Even if they could figure out who it is, they're unable to obtain enough circumstantial evidence through due process. The villagers were all extremely well informed about this, and so the malicious, vicious, and tenacious personal attacks continued. The victims can't have been okay with that, right? Couldn't they have filed for an appeal? Well, you see, about that, everyone on the inquest committee didn't want to get involved with something so troublesome. They won't stick their noses into anything related to Hinamazawa. The inquest committee is comprised of a random selection of local residents. In the event the prosecutor fails to get a conviction, they have the power to order a retrial. It's a system designed to assert the will of the people on the actions of expert prosecutors in the legal world. In this case, however, being composed of local residents has backfired. They don't want to get involved? Why is that? Hmm. How do I explain this? You could say they're afraid. Since it's a little special there. Special? Is it an outcase community? No, no. It's a little different from that. Well, just think of it as them being afraid. It's a little hard to explain it just now. Oh, right. There's an easier way. Wiping his forward with a handkerchief, he opened a file labeled as a list of members of the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance. The power of the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance, you see, is the fact that they count many people among the members who are influential in neighboring areas. Could you take a look at this? I looked at, I looked, what I saw startled me. Prefectural and municipal assembly members, staff members of the chambers of commerce, an executive of a business association, an executive of a town council association, and a PTA liaison. There were more than a few people with a lot to say both locally and in the neighbor neighboring area regions. Around here, you could pretty much expect your actions to be observed by those against the dam project. If you said something in, in its support, who knows how it would work out in your disadvantage. Or to your disadvantage. In any case, every town in this area is being held by the throat by someone from Hinamazawa. The list of Inquisition Committee members is undisclosed, isn't it? There has to be some measures 
in place to make sure they'd avoid retribution, no? Well, it is undisclosed, so the privacy is assured. But the person in charge of that is from the Okinomiya Municipal Office. In other words, a local. While you might expect some professional conf confidentiality, you can't know how everybody is, everybody is connected. The people from Hinozawa have a lot of tight bonds in that regard. When you consider the obligations and duties people have to, to the region, the web of information thereby formed of is nothing to scoff at. It's not uncommon for housewives in the neighborhood to know which kid from which house is what grade in which school, what subjects they're good at, and what vegetables they hate, among other things. You see, there's a Yakuza organization with, here with strong ties to Hinomizawa and the surrounding area, and we know that family well. It would seem that they're providing full support in these recent incidents. They seem to be providing and proving most effective. Gangsters? Siding together with the re residents opposed to the construction of the dam? It's a little hard to see what their common interest is. It's not that difficult at all. You see, actually, one of the lieutenants in the gang is originally from Hinamazawa. He was adopted into a rather influential family in the village. Exactly what was this Hinamazawa? I had thought it was some desolate rustic village. However, for some reason, they exerted a strong influence on the surrounding areas and had a strong, strong sense of unity. They would protect their village by any means necessary, even if that meant resorting to violence. The chief had said they were afraid because there were numerous influential people living there. But somehow, I got the feeling that they were afraid of the village itself. There was something clearly different from what I'd read in the documents of Tokyo. This was no simple residential protest against the dam. For some reason, an uneasy feeling began to nestle itself at the back of my mind. I chose the most basic way to ask my question. In other words, I directly asked what I wanted to know. Chief, this is just a hypothetical situation, but... Huh? This Onigafuchi Defense Alliance, in order to halt the dam project, do you think they could, say, threaten somebody important to accomplish that? The chief replied immediately, it's possible. Truth be told, they've already gone to municipal and prefectural offices, as well as local offices of the Ministry of Construction, and done things that could be construed as intimidation. Several of the workers' families have also reported that they're being followed around by some suspicious people. Well, that would make sense. To halt progress on the dam, they raided the construction site, destroyed heavy machinery and lighting, the construction, uh, construction office on fire. If they didn't have any qualms about doing that, threats and violence against people related to the dam would probably be no problem. But that was it. Even your everyday hoodlum cause you could, could use threats and violence. However, this time, it was the kidnapping of the minister's grandson, an abnormally high-level crime. Not only was pulling off the kidnapping difficult in the first place, but so was maneuvering to have the minister surrender to their demands immediately. There was no way this was the work of amateurs. Did these people have the power to enact this large of a crime? That was the heart of the matter. Was the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance an organization capable of pulling this off? In order to ask that question, once again, I chose the most basic, basic method. Again, hypothetically, do you think they could kidnap a relative of someone of political importance? There's no way they could pull off something that big. That was the answer I most hoped for. It was that answer uh, if it was that answer, my work was as good as halfway done. I might be able to get back in time for my wife to give birth. That was how it was supposed to be. The chief, without a hint of res hesitation, replied, They just might. There's no telling how far they'd go. <sighs> Sorry, Yuki. It seemed like my work wouldn't end so simply after all. 
poor guy. He's a rookie too, I think, right now. Akasaka. Oh, As Akasaka-kun. Good work. How's the information gathering at the prefectural office? It's coming along. It seems I'll be able to meet with the, their local public safety department, so I'm planning on heading out that way. How's the investigation in Tokyo going? The others are progressing along, but the number of groups we have to investigate are countless. Time isn't really a luxury here. There were no new depart developments at this time. No matter how suspicious the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance was, if they solved the case, the case in Tokyo, my job was done. It looked like my wishful, wishful thinking wouldn't come to pass. Hanging up the phone, I let my gaze drift outside the window to the valley of unfamiliar buildings. Akasaka-san, a car you can borrow just returned. I'll take you to it, so follow me. Ah, thank you. He showed me the elevator to the underground parking lot where a battered sedan was waiting for me. That the steering wheel kept drifting to the left was a little concerning, but it would be enough to get me around for a while. My destination was Shishibon City, pre the prefecture, an area under the control of the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance. The Okinomiya police station was right on the front lines. I, I was just about to cut it off, so I'm glad I stopped it. Um, it's like we're just hearing from the other side, because usually, well, we've heard this from Mion before, but now we're hearing, like, the side that they're against. AKA the police. Alright, and we've arrived at Okinomiya Prefecture, Okinomiya Police Station, which is where we will cut it off with, uh, Aka... Man, I've got a really bad, um, short-term memory. Um, A-Man, right here. Where I assume he's going to meet Oishi. I, I'm, I, was, I was always confused about Oishi, because... I figured he's not from the area, because... Um, most, it seems like most people just from the area are in it together, right? In Okinomiya, and Hinamazawa, and... That's essentially all the neighboring areas. But that will have to wait for another time. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys are excited for chapter five and whenever it comes out. Uh, don't know when that's gonna be. And also check out the Walking Dead video. I just um, well, I'm going to upload episode four. Um, I just finished that before this recording, so yeah, go watch it. And thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.